Get it. This is a poem for my best friend who couldn't make it tonight. Oh. Llamas and chocolate. Llamas and chocolate. Llamas and chocolate. We're traveling on paper thin glass here with you as our leader. It's not fair to ask you to be the first to spill your blood, but this role has graced your unwilling shoulders the year that we re-met. We were both unknown freshmen, trying to figure out what our place was in this thing I like to call genetic freak high school. We were strangers to say at best, forced to spend 57 minutes together every weekday, except Wednesday. We had to spend 45 minutes together that day. And for a while, I felt like every time I talked to you, I was talking to a box. There was something inside of you, something that was kept from me because I lost the key. And my curiosity was the same, it was the only thing that kept me bugging you with those same questions every single day in hopes of you just opening up, but knowing your lock would only budge when you decided to answer my questions with more than one word. By the time second semester came around, I had gotten a peek inside that box. Who would have known that at the same time I was able, able to openly look in? would be the same time you were pushed down this pathway of broken laughter and metal tears that scraped pathways down your cheeks for all to see. No one had been aware of this road, and none of us were prepared. Who would ever dare think that their friend would find out her body was having a re revolution? And the doctors had no idea how to fix it, or even if it could be fixed. And as your pain swayed back and forth like a pendulum, always crashing down towards the pain during what should have been the greatest parts of your life, I tried my hardest to defy gravity for you, to manage to keep you levitating so high that every nightmare you had to face would just be washed away with laughter. But just because I didn't understand science didn't mean I could just wish it away. Every corny joke I told only lasted a second higher on, on the high parts. And when the river of laughter dried up, the only thing I could offer you was llamas and chocolate. We've come a long way from the first days, and the pathway has only seemed to plunge you deeper into darkness that I can't fully comprehend. And maybe no one else can either, but that doesn't mean I can't keep trying. Trying to find that perfect joke that will keep you soaring over this pathway of broken laughter and metal tears for as long as you need it to. Because fibromyalgia has locked your body towards the ground, staring straight into this fog that somehow manages to make you think that you're not strong enough. Not strong enough. I don't understand this concept. For whenever I look at you, I see the optimism coursing through your veins, the happiness you so desperately cling onto, and that smile. You don't want to show that smile, for every little muscle twitch is another cut, and every moment of stillness is a stab, but that smile still managed to float to its way onto your face, making it easy to ignore the scratches that we, keep, that we all know are ripping at you every moment of every day. And when you can't push that smile onto your face any longer, I know any attempts I will make will be useless. But I still can't help to tell you that one phrase only you know, llamas and chocolate.